<sighs> All right, welcome stream. We're picking right back up because I happened to do the last stream completely silent, even though I read it because my microphone was muted. So whatever. Ah. I decided to uh, restart stream. gonna waste any time though I pretty much just like read them their po read their poems and then Natsuki and Yuri got into a fight they're like whose is better and I said Yuri's is better um. oh well yeah. their poems were pretty lame anyways pretty much like Yuri's was about like I don't know they're all stupid um, she's trapped at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Say, or she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm gonna do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki, she really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. Sigh. Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Doki Uwu. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. Er, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Netsuki said. About, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, oh, sh Netsuki said she like grew her boobs for me or something. I don't know. What did Natsuki say? Um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna go make some tea. Ah, uh, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Doki Uwu, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with a newfound determination. Doki Uwu. Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Ehehehe, <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent them this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, hey, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki, does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Doki Uwu. It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... Ehehehe. <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Sigh. It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? 
Well, just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori's internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Um. Okay, so we're going to try and go for Yuri. Um, unrequited. Oh, crap. Ocean. Inferno. Hopeless. Explode. Infinite. Doki Doki. Uh, love, dream, tragedy, melancholy, disaster, special. Oh, I can choose out of any on this page. Disarray. Agonizing. Nightgown. Effulgent. After image. Meager. Incongruent. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi Doki Uwu. Yo Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Ihihi. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh. That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh. Why that all of a sudden? No reason really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she returns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah. Ah ha ha. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. <clears throat> but there's one more thing. You're always hungry, and so that only leaves one leaves the uh, one option. Ooh-ah. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ahaha. Ah. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh. I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Doki Uwu to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can keep responsibility you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after playing a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just? I didn't mean that. I get too absorbed in my book. Uh, ah ha ha. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's, oh god. <laughs> That's, there's no way you could think that. You were right though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That, 
still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Hehe. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't even have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Hehe. <laughs> Plap. Kya. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was? Eh. A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that's almost that one almost worked. Ahaha. I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ahaha. Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the rip wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mmph. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Eehehe. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, uh, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Om. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Ahaha, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Ehehe, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? <clears throat> Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah, ha, ha. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Doki Uwu. <clears throat> Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ahaha, uh, ha, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, the best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. 
More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so that's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it, not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, and that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, uh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, mm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright, I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. Oh god. <clears throat> her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison, and while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Ahaha. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Doki Uwu? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? <sighs> Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then, but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's, I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's, well that's true. In fact, I, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. Ahaha, uh -huh. what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah. Uh, yeah, are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. 
I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. So sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Ah ha ha ha. Here this should work, right? I slide my desk up until it's against Yuri's. Then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to the side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh, to turn the page? Ah, uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment, but Doki Uwu, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Ooh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant it. It's kind of cute. Ah, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah, uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after, if it, after it picks up a bit, you know. That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. <coughs> Alright, I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and then slip it back into my bag. Oh god. Oh.
Oh. All right, Sayori, lay it on me. I like this one, Doki Woo. It has some nice feelings in it. I'm glad, still though. Your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. Hehe, <laughs> I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, I'd rather just hear it. No, no, I still like this one, I promise. Uh. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Doki Woo. Never ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one then? Um, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me either. Ugh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh, well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess, like, I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Doki Uwu. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? <clears throat> Bottles, I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My, bottle sh my empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them off the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. That poem was so weird. <clears throat> well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. 
it helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah ha ha, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it more, no more than a week later. Uh. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, Natsuki. What you got? Hmm, well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh, phew what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Aha, uh -huh, glad to see someone who recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Uh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden. Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away and, like, letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the, to the, rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really ne need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Alright, Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Doki Uwu. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. 
used to what I don't know it's fine take your time Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks so I offer her I offer that patience to her yeah just being appreciated like this I guess it probably sounds really stupid but seeing someone motivated by my writing it just makes me really happy are you saying you've never shared your writing before Yuri nods really I don't believe it I really only write for myself and besides people would just laugh at me do you really think that again Yuri nods huh even your close friends Yuri doesn't respond to that I wonder why anyway do you want to share this poem you wrote today yeah I do if it's with you the raccoon it happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an as an un, unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal the raccoon was has taken to following me you could say that we've gotten quite used to each other the raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently so my bread is always handy every time i brandish my cutting knife the raccoon shows me its excitement a rush of blood classic pavlovian conditioning i slice the bread and i feed myself again um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I can take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh, uh, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She She's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah, sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. Ahaha. Uh -huh. Please don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Alright Monica, let's get it. Hi again, Doki Uwu. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ahaha, uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, great job, Doki Uwu. I was going to oo in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. 
Ahaha, ah, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri liked this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Alright, just keep exploring and learn by trying new things, but anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <clears throat> Save me, the colors they won't stop, bright and beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm, it's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ah, ha, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ah ha ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ahaha, ah, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters. I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way. I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. 
I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. <clears throat> yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? <clears throat> I know you do. I know we all do. And if it, if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice. Ahaha, ah, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way, Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah, uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to find the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Ah ha ha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next. Wah. Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she's reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in a structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirlwind fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, uh, ah ha sorry I giggled. Hee hee hee, Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. 
It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery, cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this poem on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply in someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. Hee <laughs> hee. Even Doki Uwu liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. And I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well. I've been practicing practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Hee <laughs> hee. The next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki. Hmph. Don't make me go before Doki Uwu. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Doki Uwu lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with whatever what, what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. <laughs> Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities, more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly... S Gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, Why Are You All Looking At Me? Because You're Presenting. Hmph. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears, disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope they all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far. I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as, enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If, if it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yup. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee <laughs> hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Doki Uwu. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to 
I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, I'd probably walk home with Yuri. Ooh, wow, ooh, walking home with a Yuri, huh? Why does that thought make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ahaha, uh -huh, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward, but it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. <sighs> I should have saved before the last one. Probably should have saved. Oh, depression. Misfortune. Whirlwind. Contamination. Ambient. Unrestrained. Vitality. Incongruent, uncontrollable, infallible, childhood, fickle, entropy, unrequited, uh, nibble, anger. Agonizing, hopeless, oh man, I'm the last one here again, don't worry, I just walked into, were you practicing piano again? I should probably save. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be done for today. I'm gonna be done. Um, all right, let's get out of here. All right, GGS, GGS. This is a good day in Doki Doki Land. I forgot to save before telling uh, Sayori I would totally ditch her. So, um. Dang, that's rough. Um, Alright. GG's, gamers.